For a while, I have no idea how you talk so much about an inactive band, but you do it, and I love it, and I guess I'm screwed up as you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome oh, to the club. He's the best pappy ever, this guy. So thanks for listening, man. We appreciate the support. Yeah, Van Halen we can talk about on and on and on because they are so damn interesting, and there's so many different layers to it. So that's all I have to say. Anything on that, Dave? Nope. I think you hit the nail on the head on that one. That's right. And... Brian Grella, he says, I call BS on the guy calling BS on Hot for Teacher intro. Alex has <laughs> never played that part of the intro live. Show me one recording where he does the first part of the intro just like the record. I was shocked when I read that part, but it makes perfect sense. All right, so Mr. Brian Grella is saying that the mystery continues here. This beginning part of Hot for Teacher okay with the chuggity chuggity chug of the drums i remember you know ted had said it was the exhaust pipe or something on the lamborghini but we kept saying that was on panama so we still i have to get the answer from greg he never got back to me what do you think about this dave what the mystery continues mystery does continue originally i was really skeptical of that but i was listening to the intro to hot for teacher the other day and i was like you know you could make the argument for that. Really? So maybe, you know, maybe, maybe. Oh, so I, I don't know. I mean, look, hey, I wasn't there. So I don't know. And who am I to disagree with somebody that was there when it was being made? Were you there, Dave? I know. Well, I, I, I do. <laughs> I know. Well, I, I, th- there are certain people who were there who I disagree well, with. That's right. That's right. Well, <laughs> who may or may not have managed the band between 78 and 85. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, I tell you, Dave, we are on to your favorite part of the night, which is the last letter of the mailbag. And Dave, it comes from Vinny Pasquale. And let me tell you something, Dave. We are not getting off the hook easy on this one. So Vinny, my buddy Vinny from Jersey here. Vinny paints of the bridges. Okay, so Vinny says here, I hope all is well. I've been enjoying the podcast as usual. Last episodes have been extraordinary. And he says, I have a question for you in the mailbag. If you had a choice of one, what would you want? Number one. A full concert film in its entirety of the Oakland 1981 concert. Number two, an album with outtakes and alternate versions from Van Halen 1978 to 1984 years. And number three, a new album and tour with the current lineup. Dave, what is your answer? Ooh, well, I think I would go with number one. Yeah, Oakland. I All think right. I go with the Oakland show because I've never heard the whole Oakland show. The second choice was really close. I was waffling back and forth. But I feel like I've heard a lot of unreleased stuff already. So because I've never heard the Oakland show, I would go for that. And what I would go for is number three, a new album and tour. I want more Van Halen. I have alternative versions of those songs. I have heard 1981 bootlegs. Give me Another album and tour. You gotta be kidding me. Let's extend the party. That wraps up the mailbag segment. And we are on to our Sammy Summer Special. And it is all about Red. Dave and I go into a deep dive discussion on the 2011 memoir of the Red Rocker, Sammy Hagar. Oh, he gets dirty. He gets dirtier than dirt. He gets into the dirt of the dirt. And on top of that, it is followed by an interview with the co-author, Joel Selvin, who is a prickly fella, if you like to talk about it that way. He's a little bit of, <laughs> little bit of a prickly fella. But that's okay. He made for an interesting interview. And please say to the bitter, bitter end, because it's going to be like a Who Shot JR episode at the end. I'll let you guys figure it out what happened so it's all coming up next take a listen we don't plan anything it just comes and it's actually a strange phenomenon when we get in the studio and whoever it may be coming up with a seed of an idea it just snowballs you know we all get excited and, you know and a lot of times it starts out with a drum beat Check out the new podcast, The Rock Quarry, your place to hear in-depth interviews with some of Rock's most colorful characters, with your host, entertainment journalist, David J. Crible. The Rock Quarry is available for free on Spreaker and iTunes. You can check us out on Facebook at The Rock Quarry Podcast, on Twitter 
at Rock Quarry Pod, on Instagram at The Rock Quarry Podcast, or email us at The Rock Quarry Podcast at gmail.com. Oh, hi there. Al Dukes here from the Boomer and Geo Show and WFAN. And many years ago, I also produced the David Lee Roth Show on K Rock. You're listening to Dave and Dave Unchained. If you would like to send us a letter asking a question or making a statement or whatever you'd like to say, you can send it to ddunchainedpodcast at gmail.com. Oh, there's every part of me, from my hair to my toes, miss my friendship with Eddie and Alex Van Halen. I think Alex and I are probably still good friends. Eddie and I, we hit a real hard bump in the road. It's kind of like... You know, a relationship with a you know with a partner, and uh, you know, and, and and things go so wrong, you just don't feel like you could ever let that go. You know, but we'll see. I mean, because I think I can let anything go. I don't know if Eddie can let anything go. Maybe he can. But right now, there's a lot of resentment built up. It's almost like there's so much anger that I don't even want to run into him. I used to always say, oh, you know, if I ran into him somewhere, it'd be like, oh, Eddie, how you doing? Big hugs and kisses. I don't think it'd be like that right now. I think it'd be like you, you know, you did this and you did that. We'd get in in each other's face it got real ugly okay ladies and gentlemen we are here discussing something dave and i have been talking about doing this for years so we originally were going to do this a while ago and we held it off and we have a reason but we're not going to give the reason first so uh, we'll let you uh simmer on that for a minute but we are talking about sam's book red from 2011 and boy is this an interesting book we all know that a lot of stuff Sam said here, he burnt many a bridge in the process of writing this book. And no one has spoken to Sam since in the Van Halen camp. And that's a good solid 10 years, so we'll have to see what happens. But we are going to focus on the main Van Halen portion of the book. Because the book is, you know, it's got many, many pages and... We don't want to get too bogged down with all the Sam stuff because it gets into the weeds with his family and all this stuff. Nothing against Sam or his family or the Cabo Wabo stuff. We'll get into a little bit of that, but only when it's relating to the band. But we're mainly focusing on the Van Halen portions here because we really want to take those out, extract them, and kind of analyze them a little bit. So, Dave, what was your overall impression of Red when you first heard it was coming out and after you first read Red? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> that's what i said some like it hot right some like it red right right so when i first found out sam was writing a book i was excited right because a member of the band right. was going to be writing about things now right. dave had done that already right but as i like to say dave was a little bozy bozy bob right right stream of consciousness for sure it was, a, it was a good read but it was it was tough when he's all over the place right and it would be interesting to hear Sam's perspective of his time in the band. He likes to say he likes to tell it like it is. Right. I think sometimes that's more like tell it like he thinks it is. Right. Yeah. But, you know, the truth is always somewhere in the middle of for course. where two people think it of course. is. Right? Of course. But I was super excited when I heard he was coming out with a book. And I was really excited when I read it. Because, as you mentioned, I mean, for better or for worse, yeah. this guy did not hold back. Right. As a read, I mean, it was a definite page turner. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I can't believe he's talking about that. Right. I can't believe he said that. Right. All these things that uh, made a great book. And this was around the time, this was uh, after Keith Richards had come out with his life book. Mm. And Sam had come out with his book, and this really got the ball rolling in terms of musicians and other people yep. writing autobiographies, That's true. Or having people write. Everybody's doing them now, right? And and or other people writing authorized biographies. I mean, Sam always used to like to say it was Keith and me who got the ball rolling. I. I uh, maybe. Well, that's I mean, Sam, well, yeah. Sam was one of the first ones after Keith. I'll get. I'll right. give him that. Right. I, I tend to give more credence to Keith because Keith's book, I mean, really got a lot of press, uh, sold a lot of copies. Even though I like to joke that you know a bunch of the book wasn't written by Keith because he couldn't remember it, so he had to have other people I know. writing I know. stuff. But it was still a great book. Don't right. get me wrong. Right. 
Where, but but those are my initial reactions when I heard he was coming out with the book right. and when I read the book. Yeah, well, we should also mention that this was Sam's second try. There's another book out there that was very, very short-lived. There's only a handful of copies out there called Red Storm Arising. And this was pulled. And it was pulled because I think of the Van Halen reunion, <laughs> which happened in 2004, or or maybe uh, I'm trying to remember when that book came out, but I thought it was pulled because of that, but I don't know what the story was, but that book was pulled. Copies are out there. Dave and I are seeking out copies of that book. We'd love to do a podcast on that one day, and that will happen, hopefully, but we are uh, focusing on Red. This was interesting because... Sam definitely got raw here. I mean, he really got raw. He got into some weeds on all kinds of... He comes out swinging. So we're going to start with Chapter 7, if you're following in the book. We go from, like, Chapter 7 to Chapter 14. We're not going to cover everything, like I said, because it's just too much. We're going to really take out the meat of this whole book here and really kind of analyze it. Interesting stuff. So right out the gate, listen to this, okay? This is Sammy's comment on David Lee Roth in in Chapter 7. The guy was a great frontman, great attitude in rock, and had an image from hell. But I just couldn't stand the guy. He was the opposite of what I believed in and what I am. First of all, the guy's not a great singer, and he acts like he's the coolest, hottest guy in the world. When to me, he looks gay. The guy was never believable to me. So... Right off the bat, Sam is throwing down the gauntlet. I mean, he's calling Dave gay, for Christ's sake. I don't know. I thought that was pretty bold. I mean, I understand that, you know, Sam has technically a much better singer, and he always has that edge with Dave. But what did you make of that comment, Dave? I'm no therapist, all right? Yeah. But he has always had this challenge that he will always be compared to David Roth. Yeah, never stop. And many people consider Dave the GOAT, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Greatest of all time. Right. And even if that's not true, many people consider him the greatest lead singer of Van Halen. Right. Now, most people will admit Sammy's technically the better singer and all that. But I really think that Sam has this inferiority complex where he refuses to be looked at as anything less. And David Lee Roth. Yeah, yeah. And they are just two different kinds of personalities. Right, yeah, totally. I mean, even though they were born years apart. Yes. But, you know, their birthdays are both in October. They're like three days apart or something right, like that. Right, right, yeah. So, you know, in terms, in terms of astrology signs, you think they would be more alike. Right. But they are really not. Right. Well, I think uh, Dave has his own sign in astrology. <laughs> <laughs> he's out of his I mind right. he's I, of, I think you're right. right but those two guys you know, it's amazing how they are like oil and vinegar right yet they were both able to work with van halen for the better part of a decade absolutely and it's funny because he mentions here you know we, we won't get into the whole claudio thing because we beat the living hell out of that but he's, oh thank you <laughs> I still say, I still say, move on, move I still, on, nothing I, to see here, move on. I still say Claudio got a little kashish. That's all yeah. I'm going to say. Claudio got a little, he got a little spinach there, Dave. He got a little something there to be like, hey, why don't you, like, just like you said in the last, yeah, don't you, don't you, next time you see it, maybe mention my name. <laughs> you know? So anyway, so Ted Templeman told Sam, we all know about the opening in Van Halen, and in the book, he says, who are they going to get? Ozzy, Ronnie James Dio, or me? Like, he, he acted like those are the only three options on the planet, which is funny because Ozzy, Ronnie James Dio, none of those guys are going to work at Van Allen. But Well, that's so funny that he puts himself in the same league as those two guys. Now, yeah. I'll be the first to admit that in terms of vocal ability, yeah. he's better than Ozzy. Yes. And he certainly... An equal with Ronnie James Dio. Right, Ronnie. Yeah. No argument. Right. But in terms of gravitas, yes, he was 
not in their league. No, but not at that not at that time for well, sure. It's amazing because one thing that is a running theme in this book is the pomp that he 